Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and mabuhai. Welcome to our weekly show here on Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, your host for Pinoy Power Hawaii. I want to thank again the wonderful staff of Think Tech Hawaii for allowing us the opportunity to come to your homes and discuss issues that may interest you and, of course, that pertains or concerns our Filipino community. I have a very special guest today who is uh, close and dear to my heart. He's an extended part of uh, our Ortega family from La Union originally, uh, the longest political or oldest political dynasty in the Philippines. So it is my pleasure to uh, introduce it's like my nephew, attorney, Sonny Ganaden. Yeah. Welcome, Sonny. Aloha, hey. Como esta? Como esta? Okay, Come so on. in our show, you can speak Tagalog, Ilocano, English, mm. or Itaglish. Okay, I'm going to mm -hmm. stick to English. Okay. <laughs> so uh, tell us a little bit about you so uh, they could understand where you're coming from. Uh, well, my background is I am a lawyer. I do family law, criminal law. I work with small businesses. Um, I have two other jobs. I'm also a writer and journalist, so I um, have written for Hanaho, the Hawaiian Airlines magazine, for the Star Advertiser, um, for the State of Hawaii as mm -hmm. a writer for a report on criminal justice reform in 2013. And I also teach at the University of Hawaii at Manoa in the Ethnic Studies Department. The course that I teach is called Race, Class, and the Law. And so what we talk about is the ways that those things intersect. So the ways mm -hmm. that um, I guess folks like me and you who have um, um, roots in other places, um, you know, we, we talk about mm -hmm. how we can influence and uh, change the law here in Hawaii and in the United States. And um, I was uh, spent the last year of my life running for office, um, trying to do my part in uh, expanding the community service that I was um, taught to do um, um, kind of further with the Democratic Party. Um, so uh, we just had an election on mm -hmm. August 11th, um, but I'm back to work now, teaching and lawyering. And uh, thank you so much for having me here. You're, you're, you've got a lot. You'll uh, sound like you know everything. I don't. I do not. And you're, you're only, you're only two, 15 years old, right? No, <laughs> so, no I'm in my 30s. Um, well in my 30s. You know, our show is about empowerment, yeah. and uh, we always uh, want to uh, try to um, bring out the best in people, and uh, hopefully by um, listening to uh, your experiences and yeah. your knowledge, we hope to uh, inspire, especially the young ones that are uh, tuning in and listening to our show. Oh, absolutely. So how, how did you become so... Um, adventurous, like uh, wanting to do everything and well, so natural in uh, all well, the things that you do? Like a lot of folks um, who live here in Honolulu in their 20s and 30s, I had to get a bunch of jobs to get by. I, um, mm -hmm. I was blessed to have very good parents. Um, my, uh, my mom's a teacher. She teaches mm -hmm. special education. She uh, just retired this year. My dad's in business. My um, grandparents on my dad's side, um, they moved the family from the Philippines first to Guam, then mm -hmm. here, and then to Los Angeles and San Francisco uh, in the 60s. Um, so I suppose that I'm generation two, I suppose, on that side. Um, and I'm the only lawyer in the family. I mm -hmm. hope there's going to be more in the future. But um, I was taught to give back like they gave back. Mm -hmm. um, my Lolo was a Philippine scout, so he served in the war, mm -hmm. and um, it's his service as well as my Lola's service as a nurse that um, allowed us to become American. Um, and these are the kinds of things that I talk about. So I talk about how to empower young people to be more engaged mm -hmm. with civility, how to engage in our democracy. Um, when you read the news or you hear the news or you check it out on your phone, it seems like every week there's something new about a growing economic inequality, how hard it is to be mm -hmm. a young person. There's a lot of folks here and a lot of Filipino folks here in Honolulu that are working two or three jobs just to live in a multi-generational home um, where there's a concentration of Filipino Americans here in Hawaii. There is a lacking infrastructure. Just mm -hmm. last week, we had a lot of kalihi underwater. Um, 
there are real threats to the environment here in the Pacific, and there are threats to immigrant populations going on around the world. What we see in the news with the Trump administration and internationally is scary. Um, and a lot of that can feel daunting for young people. Mm -hmm. But I think the, the, but I think what the important thing to realize is that um, these changes, when you want change, when you want to make a more equitable society, when you want to make democracy more fair, mm -hmm. it requires young people. So if you look at the history of the civil rights movement in the United States in the 60s and 70s, all the cool R&B that we still listen to, um, the way that affected culture, uh, what happened here in the 70s with um, people coming together and um, organizing to save the environment and mm -hmm. save the beaches and save our surf, um, the local Filipino community, um, what happened in 1986, 1987 in Manila. Yes. That was mm -hmm. young people. So it's like, so when you look at all those pictures, it's like those are young faces with a lot of energy um, who are just fed up. And so you don't need to know everything about how the world works. You don't need to be a lawyer with you know, 30 years of education. You just yes. need to get out there and get empowered and try and do something about your community. I understand from listening to you, I could listen to you all day because uh, you sound so engaged and uh, seems to be knowledgeable about a little bit of everything that's uh, happening. And like I said, you're only uh, 18 years old, so <laughs> there's, I'm not, no, I'm not. there's a lot of knowledge. I'm Filipino, you get to keep this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're uh, great I am it. so Horny. impressed that, um, you know, somebody as young as you are, you, um, you want to make a difference. You, wanna, you want your voice to be heard. Um, you certainly uh, wanna, wanna make changes. Well, that's the point, right? So I have been blessed to have had the opportunity to pursue an education. And prior to um, just maybe 30 or 40 years mm -hmm. ago, for a lot of folks in the Filipino community, a lot of those avenues were um, not as readily available. So. Uh, we do have a significant amount of Filipino Americans and um, folks that were Filipino immigrants that mm -hmm. practice law here in Hawaii. We have judges here in Hawaii that are of Filipino descent. Um, but still, we have some... We are underrepresented. But yeah, but we're mm -hmm. still underrepresented. And, we, and mm -hmm. what does it matter that we have a whole bunch of Filipino lawyers if you know, most of the Filipino community can't afford to hire them? or that um, the actual community where Filipinos live, mm -hmm. they don't have equal access to public education, or right. um, a lot of these streets still flood. So these are the kinds of issues that we need to be engaging with in politics. Mm -hmm. So it's not enough to just get representation. It's now um, a time for us to maintain our integrity, our mm -hmm. dignity, and, um, and speak on behalf of each other and community. Um, well, it's bringing this, awareness yeah, and absolutely, um, absolutely. Uh, that awareness uh, turns into action Yeah, yeah. and actually wanting to do something to yeah. uh, make a change. Well, historically, um, when ethnic groups get together, they, they have the capacity to mm -hmm. really build power. So the democratic revolution of the 1950s here was led in large part by Japanese Americans who were World War II veterans. Mm -hmm. um, Filipinos, when they've combined, they have been able to sweep people into power. Um, there's a significant Filipino population here um, who speaks Tagalog and Ilocano, and they are very well represented in the service industries, um, in nursing, in, in the kinds of um, things in that a lot of our... In the medical field, Yeah, and in the kinds of things that homes. our families... Yes. Um, we all know somebody who, who does these kinds of work, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but what it means to have equal opportunity, what it means to live in a truly democratic society is that you can be the kind of person that you want to be. So, mm -hmm. I mean... I'm a blind as a bat. I don't know anything about electricity. I'm, I'd make a terrible, um, like, But you mechanic. certainly sound knowledgeable. Well, I'm good at one thing, so, <laughs> and that's what I'm going to try and push. And that's what equal opportunity means. It means that I had the opportunity mm -hmm. to pursue an education, and it would be only appropriate that I try to serve the community um, with that education. That is so inspiring uh, to hear that you are uh, a self-starter or motivated, and um, I'm just... Uh, listening to uh, your story and how you were able to uh, uh, pick up these skills from uh, the teachings of your Lilo, uh, your, your, your parents who are educators yeah. and uh, successful in their own right. So, yeah, they're doing okay. Uh, it, 
were you inspired uh, because uh, they were born leaders, or this is something that you truly wanted to do well, for yourself? Like you, Auntie, uh, I, I'm okay at talking, mm -hmm. and so you find your niche. Um, and so for me, it's in the practice of law and in educating. Mm -hmm. um, because I didn't grow up with a family of lawyers, I, you know, I, mm -hmm. I'd never been to court um, a, prior to my second year of law school. Um, like a lot of folks that are um, here who end up in law school who go to the very excellent William S. Richardson School of Law mm -hmm. where I was educated. Um, prior to that, I went to UCLA. Um, we just didn't see uh, faces that looked like our own or family members that looked like our own mm -hmm. on the walls or in the books. And, um, and it didn't make a lot of sense to me. Mm -hmm. and, it didn't, and it doesn't make a lot of sense to us when we find ourselves in those positions, um, especially as young people who try to pursue um, educations in career paths that essentially weren't designed for us. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't matter. Like you, you gotta, you gotta try and make change. Um, one of what what I'm really inspired by is the work um, of people that came before me mm -hmm. just 20 or 30 years ago um, who do critical race theory. Critical theory is what we call it in the law, which is saying, well, um, since um, our answers, our ancestors aren't really reflected in mm -hmm. the law. Like we didn't write these rules, but we're here now. So what do we do about it? Um, and where do we take inspiration? We take inspiration from our own culture, from our own communities, and from our own narratives. Mm -hmm. So that's what I try to do as a writer. I try to, and I think that you try to do as um, a person on the radio and mm -hmm. as a person on here at Think Tech Hawaii is um, honor the dignity of people's stories. Um, and turn those stories and narratives into a broader discussion of what it means to uh, dignify a community. Um, and, That's and, and, exactly and, what, what I want to do, is I want our voices not to be suppressed, but uh, to be heard, no, no matter how uh, small or ins insignificant may be, we still have a voice, and yeah. that uh, we need to learn to stand up uh, and speak up for what you believe in. You know, there's a saying, Sunny, that uh, if you don't uh, uh, stand up for something, you'll fall for just anything. So, you know, it's really, really good to uh, uh, really stand up, take a stand. You know, I mean, I think Malcolm X said it, but a lot of people said it before him, and a lot of people are going to uh -huh. say it after him. Um, I just lost an election. It was heartbreaking, um, but. I am. I feel, and it was so close. Yeah, but I feel empowered by the community and by the support that I've gotten from people around me. I don't feel like a victim. I feel like somebody who um, is capable of taking a loss um, and who's mm -hmm. um, who's got to come back and and I keep playing the game. Um, so it's so I I want to thank you for being here and um, and for allowing me to continue to talk about how to do um, community community empowerment work. Yeah. Yes, you'll have a lot of uh, chance to do that. Uh, still young, and you've got a lot of time left. Anyway, we will uh, come back with our discussion. We're going to take a quick break here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with our guest, Asani Ganaten. Minasan, konnichiwa. Think Tech Hawaii ga Nihongo de otodake suru. Konnichiwa Hawaii no Nihongo Hosou no host, Kunisue Yukari desu. 各週月曜日の2時からお届けしています。日本語コミュニティ、ハワイの日本語コミュニティに便利なお助け情報、ニュースなどをゲストをお招きしてお届けする番組です。こんにちは、ハワイ。各週の月曜日2時からぜひ
uh, Ortega family who hails from San Fernando, La Union. So with us, attorney uh, Sunny Ganaden. Ganaden, uh, they might mispronounce your last I, name. I'm okay with the mispronunciation. Uh -huh. A lot of people take offense with that, <laughs> but um, I suppose that I'm Filipino American, right? Yes. So like, so, Ganaden. Ganaden, right? Well. So, the, so I, I, from what I understand, the name actually is like part of our Catholic heritage. So it's uh -huh. two words combined. So Gan Aden. Garden mm -hmm. of Eden. There's two ways to look at that. There's um, kind of the critical, um, cynical way, uh -huh. which is saying that, you know, like, who are my people? Who is my family? Like, what did we lose in colonization? What did we lose from um, the Spanish coming to the mm -hmm. Philippines? But the way I look at it is um, this is the name of my grandparents and my parents, yes. and it's an honor to, to carry Either on. Either way you look at it, it means power. Well, it. Yes. it, it, it <laughs> So, so words are as like as important as you as you make them. Okay, we're going to continue our conversation, and um, I know that uh, uh, criminal law or criminal defense is closest to your heart. Yeah. And why did you? Anong uh, rason? What was the reason why you uh, went uh, that route rather than going into business law or any other field? Um, it just feels right to root for the uh, underdog to to try and take care of the people that mm -hmm. are um, um, facing the biggest struggles. Um, so that's the kind of thing that I grew up seeing uh -huh. from my um, my Lola and my aunties who are nurses, and my mom was a teacher. So it just felt right to uh, show up in court and advocate for victims of domestic violence or kids who are facing um, um, the wrath of criminal justice. Mm -hmm. um, what a lot of us lawyers notice um, is um, who shows up in criminal court, and it's, um, it's a lot of people of color, um, it's a lot of uh, the Filipino Minorities. communities, um, indigenous people, a lot of mm -hmm. Hawaiians here, and, um, and it's just not fair if we look at the statistics. And it's in 2018, we know how to make a better criminal justice system that is more equitable, that saves the community money, and, um, and it's about time that we did that. So. Um, in Kalihi, there is 16 acres that is uh, taken up by the Oahu Community Correctional Center. Mm -hmm. um, there's a tentative plan to move the correctional center. However, there have been 25 states that have um, gone the other way. So what they're doing is making smaller prisons and jails because they realize that half the people in prison, they're just too poor to get out. Mm -hmm. So California, just last week, uh, passed bail reform. So the way we think about bail is, you know, if you just get thrown in for a DUI or for any kind of thing, then, mm -hmm. you know, you got to make your bail. But um, what we're learning in the United States and around the world is that that's not the way to think about it. The way to think about it is um, judges need to figure out if somebody is a danger to themselves or others mm -hmm. or is going to try and leave. It's the only two factors. Um, and then when you take care of that, then you can save a lot of money. Here in Hawaii, right. we mm -hmm. might, might be able to save $65 million mm -hmm. a year just by clearing out the prisons. And we can move that money back into services, back mm -hmm. into kids, back into education. And these are political decisions. These are the kinds of decisions that we need our politicians to be brave about. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to um, say that they're pushing for um, bad people to get out scot-free. That's not what right. we're asking for. What we're saying is we need to be smart about justice in the future. Mm -hmm. And then when we do that, then we can rethink what that 16 acres in at OCCC is going to be. Um, we can really work on the um, what some people call systemic racism built mm -hmm. into criminal justice. Mm -hmm. um, there are examples of historical figures that were imprisoned inappropriately um, here in Hawaii, in the Philippines, mm -hmm. um, in our religions. And so um, we, I think, need to be more empathetic and more thoughtful about um, how we are spending our resources in criminal justice. Um, some of them are in prison because they spoke up. They spoke up, yeah. so, and that's, that's some of them. And then other people um, here in Honolulu, they're in prison because they, um, they weren't getting the kind of mental health services that mm -hmm. they need. Um, they were sitting or lying down on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. um, their stuff was taken. Um, the scariest thing for me is how some mental health conditions are adult onset. So I'm in my 30s, and mm -hmm. I mean, it would scare the heck out of me and my family if I came down with something or somebody I knew came down with something, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. you, know, you burn out your family and you end up on the street. And then 
you end up in criminal court. That's not fair. We don't want to live in that kind of a society, and it turns out it costs us way too much money. And we should be putting that money back into kids and education in the future. You've been putting a lot of uh, thoughts in this, right? Uh, because it, it does make sense. Sometimes uh, we uh, put that blanket assumption that uh, they should all go to jail because they've done something something wrong. Yeah. But uh, I agree with you. It makes sense when we uh, need to screen them or uh, categorize them so that uh, uh, they don't just end up rotting in jail, but uh, perhaps they need medical attention Absolutely. to uh, Absolutely. Uh, better, better their, or sharpen their mind rather than um, spending uh, society's money to uh, just kind of be caretakers uh, for them when they can uh, be more, uh, they could contribute Absolutely. to uh, society. A lot of the Filipino community is real law and order, and mm -hmm. I think I am too. Um, I, um, if, we, if you take a walk around parts of Kalihi, you see gambling rooms and sometimes people on the street, mm -hmm. and, um, the, and, um, and your first inclination is to call the cops, and that's usually the, what you got to do. But you need to realize that these are systemic problems, that if we had our money in different places, you wouldn't see those things. Right. That, um, it's that, prevention. Yeah, this is preventative mm -hmm. stuff, and that we deserve to live in a community where our politicians put the money where the money should go. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, this is, this is going to be a tough moral fight for the next probably 10 years here in Hawaii. Um, and, it, and, it's hard to, and it's hard to take, especially when you're talking about um, victims, you know, mm -hmm. so I, I represent victims of domestic violence in court, in a family court, mm -hmm. and I've been to hell and back, and I've seen it, and, um, and it's just terrifying, some of that stuff, but, you know, we're going to have to be brave about changing the system to make it fairer and more equitable for everybody and safer for the entire community. Wow. Really, really appreciate our conversation about bringing awareness. Um, having the fair or right rep representation yeah. for uh, people that can't speak for themselves or are too afraid uh, to uh, uh, come out or to, to leave because they feel like their life is in danger. Yeah. Always being bullied. Uh, that's yeah. the big big word. You're bullied at home, you're bullied in school, and then you're bullied in your marriage life. And yeah, yeah, I mean, um, the community is being more educated about cycles of violence and how mm -hmm. to get out of them. And, um, and our education system is getting a little bit smarter about teaching uh, kids, especially about mm -hmm. how to be in healthy relationships. Um, if you are accused of a crime in Hawaii or in the United States, then you automatically get a lawyer. But if you um, need to, say, remove yourself from an abusive relationship, mm -hmm. you don't. Or if you need to fight to get your kids back, you don't get a lawyer. Um, I think that's unfair. So there are nonprofits like the Domestic Violence Action Center, uh, Legal Aid Society of Hawaii. Um, there's a really active group of Filipino mm -hmm. lawyers here in the community that really try to serve the community um, pro bono for free. Um, and I do that work as well. And, and, it's, and it's hard, heartbreaking work. But, mm -hmm. but um, you know, you try to make the world a little bit better one case at a time. Wonderful. It fits right in our topic today. Uh, it's called a uh, call to serve. Do uh, you find that that's your calling to uh, represent the uh, uh, underrepresented, to give them a voice, to give them that fighting chance? Uh, what is it? What is it, Sunny, that you would like to leave as a legacy, uh, so that oh, when they hear your name, oh, Sunny Ganadan, uh, the Garden of Eden? No, oh God, uh, I'm doing. I'm doing my best, but like a lot of people in this community, they're doing their best too to try and. Um, serve the community and um, do it with joy mm -hmm. and do it with a sense of um, I like community. your laid back you know. style. Well, it's, you know, well this, is, this is fun. And, so, like, so really, here we are chatting um, mm -hmm. and we're talking about trying to make the world a better place, but could you imagine um, not doing this? I couldn't. You know, like, like here we are mm -hmm. uh, talking about tough issues, but um, I was taught to do it with a smile on your face and with joy in your heart, and, um, and that's what I try to do. That is music to my ear, grace under fire. And, uh, you know, I really enjoy having a conversation with you. Oh, you, mahalo, thank you. You put me at ease, you know. When we talk about lawyers, uh, a lot of people feel um, intimidated or, 
you know, they have so much knowledge that they're just going to look at you like a tiny ant and um, not be able to uh, say anything in return. That's not what the job is. The job is to advocate for other people and to put their needs um, above your own. And I think that's how it is in politics and public service. And if you don't want to do that, mm -hmm. um, well, then there's a lot of other jobs for you. Um, but if you can do this and, um, and still have time to, for me, to go surf and hang out with loved ones uh -huh. and, and, um, and, and enjoy your life, then um, this is that what is the party is That is so that. awesome yeah. to uh, hear um, you doing what you're passionate about, yeah. really enjoy it, and also trying your best to make a difference yeah. or bringing awareness. Well, you are too, and, and, I, and I think most of our viewers are as well. Um, there's going to be a big fight about uh, changing criminal justice in the future mm -hmm. and about, um, and about I think, serving the Filipino community in terms of infrastructure and where the actual Filipinos live. We need mm -hmm. to start really talking about how Kalihi is underwater, how um, parts of um, public education need a lot of help in the, mm -hmm. in the future. And I think that we can save a lot of money by getting some governmental oversight, by saving money on criminal justice reform, and then we can do those big changes, but we have to be brave and we have to, and we have to do it with some joy. I, I'm glad uh, you're starting up a movement and uh, for somebody uh, your age to uh, have this awareness, to have this knowledge, uh, to have this uh, charisma. You're so kind to me. <laughs> Thank you so much. No, just, well, I like listening this, to you because oh, you make just, a lot of sense. Oh, this is just the you job. Yeah. So um, I'd like to see more people like you to uh, help us with the empowerment and uh, to do it with such a uh, style that you can uh, feel at ease, get the job done, and yet not feel um, pressured in any way. Yeah, we, we also live in paradise. This is the most beautiful place on the planet. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, you can put in a hard day and still head to the At beach. the end of the day? At the end of the day, we live in a wonderful place with the best food in the world. So, um, so we have a <laughs> well, lot, surfing and everything so we have a lot sun, to be right? thankful for. Um, and, but, but we still live in a world that is very inequitable and, and very inequitable for the Filipino community. And, we, and we, we're going to continue to do some work for it. Well, Sunny, I, uh, I join you in um, that quest to make this uh, uh, a little bit of heaven and earth. Yeah while we are here anyway. I want to thank you for being my guest today. You uh, opened up my eyes and uh, awakened me to uh, do more, to, uh, oh, to no. change oh, it's uh, for something positive. So uh, thank you for uh, being our guest on Think Tank Hawaii. Uh, our show, Pinoy Power Hawaii, can be heard live every Tuesday at 12 noon. So if there are more issues that you would like to talk about, you are welcome to uh, come to our show or perhaps help me get the word out and uh, uh, join Absolutely. me Let's in spreading the word. Yeah. So uh, thank you to my wonderful, uh, uh, he's full <laughs> of uh, character, knowledge. Uh, I look up to him because oh, no, he, no, has, he has the knowledge. Uh, thank you, Sunny, for coming to Anti Show today to help us with the empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. empower. Yeah. Maraming salamat, mabuhay, and Maraming salamat. aloha. Aloha.